Um, so I am uh, Captain Jerome Penches with the San Jose Police Department. Um, basically, my background is that I've got um, you know about 18 and a half years in law enforcement. 14 of those years, maybe 13, 14 of those years, is in criminal investigations. Uh, Santa Fe is a city of about 100,000 people right now. We are a department of about 180 people right now. So spending a lot of time in criminal investigations, I have a pretty intimate knowledge, I guess you could say, with regard to drugs uh, and how it's impacted us in the city and uh, you know around the country. Um, I have not to two horns or anything, but I've kind of been there, done that. Um, I have worked with drugs quite a bit. So um, probably five, six years ago is when I started to notice this major shift. I spent some time in patrol uh, after getting promoted, went back to investigations and saw this major shift about probably five, six years ago where heroin and actually opiate abuse had just skyrocketed. I mean, it, it, in, in Santa Fe, um, it was pretty obvious with our property crime numbers. I kind of wanted to get an idea of who my audience is. Do we have mayors? That are, I don't know what we've got here as mayors. But if we're looking at a crime reduction standpoint, um, we really got to look at exactly what Jill is talking about with harm reduction. Um, it, it is it is the wave of the future for police, and we got to. Unfortunately for us, we, we kind of shut ourselves off, and we. Um, we need to open our minds to this, and we need to reduce the harmful effects that we have in drug addiction. But that's mainly when I started noticing that we had an issue with, with regard to, to drugs, was our property crime issue. We were probably double the statistics in the nation with regard to burglaries and all kinds of property crimes. So we did, we, basically as cops, we were chasing the same people over and over again. That's ultimately what we were doing. I noticed this immediately when I took over property crimes and said, you know, I, I keep getting this kid coming through and we keep chasing him, putting him in jail, keep chasing him, putting him in jail. And we keep hearing the same thing. We're going to arrest ourselves out of the problem. Um, I am a policeman and I'm a firm believer that some people need to go to jail. Some people need to go to prison. They're, they're built for a reason. However, these drug users, we absolutely have to look at treatment. You all are the major stakeholders to make this happen. So I'm really glad that we're having this conversation. Um, so a little bit of statistics. I don't want. I know that Jill kind of talked about it a little bit. Um, deaths from drug overdose have been rising steadily in the past two decades and have become the leading cause of injury death in the United States. Uh, in 2012, among 25 to 64 year olds, drug overdoses caused more deaths than traffic crashes. Unbelievable. Every day in the United States, 114 people die as a result of accidental drug overdose. Uh, we talked about stigmas. Uh, we talk about um, what we're getting mainstream kids that are overdosing on drugs and on pills. We know that as cops that we, we, we knew that, that population that was almost relegated to drug use, we knew who those people were. Now we're starting to see these quarterbacks come in. We're starting to see the young cheerleaders overdosing on pills. We're starting to smoke heroin. This taboo about heroin being this bad drug is not there anymore. When you're having these young kids that come in and say, we don't understand what your problem is, cops. We're just smoking a little bit of heroin. Shocked me. Absolutely threw me for a loop when I've got a young, attractive 19-year-old <coughs> nodding out at my table, she's not the stereotypical heroin addict, okay? I, I knew we have a problem. So, accidental overdoses. Every day in the United States, 114 people die as a result of drug overdose, and approximately 6,700 are treated in emergency rooms. Here we go with the social issue. We can be here all day, probably. Um, in New Mexico, top 10 for illicit drug use within the past month among our youth. We're not happy about these stats. Obviously. We're almost double the national rate among uh, overdose death rates. In our northern New Mexico, uh, Rio Riva County, we rank third in the nation in overdose deaths. 
And again, more people are dying as a result of <coughs> overdose deaths than car accidents and firearm deaths. And, and then obviously our proper, property crime um, stats are starting to show a direct correlation with heroin abuse. When I took over property crimes, we did not arrest a single person who was not an addict. Every single person that we arrested for burglary, breaking into your homes, was a heroin addict. Again, shocking. So, basically what happens is we have a mayor pass, uh, our former mayor, gets together with Seattle. Seattle creates their I think the first in the nation with a a, um, a diversion program for low-level drug offenders. Mayor Koss gets together with Seattle and the Drug Policy Alliance um, kind of pitch this idea to Mayor Koss and say, hey, you guys ought to take a look at this program uh, in Seattle. It might work for us in Santa Fe. So Seattle came down. They did a presentation to law enforcement. Uh, public defenders, the district attorney's office, bunch of cops, bunch of law enforcement professionals, um, treatment providers, and pitched this idea with this low-level drug offender diversion. Um, he ran with it, talked to me about it. I said, we need to do something. Um, it has gotten to the point where I'm tired of running and hitting my head against a wall and falling back down and saying, something has to change. I don't care about politics and I don't care about which side of the aisle this is going to go in. We got to do something. Um, this does have bipartisan support. Um, so, LEAD. LEAD is our law enforcement assisted diversion. It is a, right now, it's a pilot project. It is a pre-booking uh, diversion program, meaning we divert low-level drug offenders directly into treatment services as opposed to going to jail. They are directly um, given to treatment providers immediately. There is no uh, come see me in the morning type deal. It is, it is from us to the treatment providers immediately. Uh, we divert, uh, divert them directly into these wraparound services, which is drug treatment, emergency housing. We do have a lot of DV situations, domestic violence situations. Uh, we provide emergency shelter, food, medications, pregnancy programs, dual diagnosis treatment, education, uh, trade training, uh, and so forth. So the central tenets of the lead are that, is that we want to divert people into drug treatment as opposed to jail. Uh, we also want to redirect our officers to, to handle more pressing needs for the law enforcement community. For us, a felony takes probably six, seven hours to process. We're talking maybe a heroin addict with a rig and, and maybe a gram, about six hours. You know. um, right now, if we do the diversion, about an hour in the back of the streets, um, taking care of what they need to do uh, with these more law enforcement priorities. Uh, and then we have a cost savings to social system. So when we were talking about Seattle, Seattle did a cost benefit analysis. We also did a cost benefit analysis in Santa Fe. So we took a hundred of our top property crime offenders and we did a, a, an analysis over that. And what we found is that those hundred people cost our systems over four million dollars. So we're talking cops, we're talking um, courts, hospital stays, um, fire department personnel, all of those systems cost, for 100 offenders, cost over $4 million. In New Mexico, we're about $41,000 a year to house inmates. With LEAD, what we're finding out is that it's about five to 10000 on average that we're treating people uh, with this diversion program. Um, those are the central tenets, and then of course we want to reduce these overdose deaths. Um, and we want to reduce, for me, uh, this has to be a, a crime reduction standpoint. Okay. So how does it work? Basically an officer meets somebody on the street that normally would go to jail if they have charges. Um, based on a set of criteria, very quickly that set of criteria is we obviously don't want murderers, rapists, uh, drug dealers, uh, those people in leave. Um, 
the criteria is 18 and above. This is an adult program. Um, you cannot have a violent criminal, criminal history within the past 10 years. Um, no pimps. Nobody that uh, takes advantage of children. And um, there's, there's some other. It is opiate based only, so we don't deal with any other drugs, alcohol, any of that stuff. So the officer, based on that criteria, will determine whether or not this person is going to be diverted into lead. Um, if they are not diverted into lead, they immediately go to jail through the traditional uh, criminal justice system. But with us, based on that criteria, they talk to a lead, lead officer, which is usually me or another detective, um, and they say what they, they let us know what they have. Um, we go over, we meet with them, we fill out some paperwork immediately. It takes about five minutes. We drop them off over with the case manager, and and they're directly into services. We do have a social referral component to the program. People don't necessarily need to commit crimes to be referred into our program. If an officer wants to take a proactive approach to help somebody that they've seen in the streets that uh, could benefit from the program, uh, they can do a social referral and refer that person into, into lead. So does it work? Um, we don't have measured outcomes right now. You're just talking to you know Captain Sanchez here, and I will tell you. Uh, we have 15 clients. We rolled out the uh, final implementation was April of 2014. We have 15 clients who have basically come, come through the door. Of the 15 clients, one has been rearrested. One was rearrested for a traffic violation warrant that she got that she didn't tell us about. Um, she's been in the program since full implementation in April. So it's almost a year. Unbelievable with the way that this woman lives her life. She's a 19 year old kid. But unbelievable that she's gone through lead for almost a year without getting rearrested with the crime reduction standpoint, of course. Not dying, it's amazing how she's not dead. Um, not picking up charges, not committing any other crimes. So. <laughs> so of those 15, only one has quote unquote reoffended. Um, we in Santa Fe are experiencing the lowest property crimes uh, rates in recent history. Does this have anything to do with lead? Um, who knows? Our evaluation piece will let us know that. I know that Walmart's probably very happy with us. Um, <laughs> Three clients continue uh, with services through a treatment provider. They are not active. Um, they are still within the program. They don't get kicked out. Our treatment provider continues to work with them even though they are not actually in lead. Um, so they also have not been rearrested. Um, we have one client who is basically our superstar, we call her. Uh, very, 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 I mean, I can't express this enough to you all, you all probably know. We're talking hardcore drug addicts. Some have been injected by their parents. <coughs> Amazing how they live their lives. But she has a home now. She's reintegrated with her kids. She's speaking with them. She's, uh, they're both living with her. She's been in lead from the get-go. Um, several of our clients are employed. Uh, they continue to work. And all are continuing treatment with either uh, attending school, attending, obtaining jobs, um, stable, or otherwise basically functional members of society right now. So in my opinion, it works. Treatment works. Um, that's all I got. <laughs>